Now that we've reviewed what a normal pelvic study should look like and how to definitively evaluate for an intrauterine pregnancy, let's talk about an ectopic pregnancy. When evaluating for an ectopic pregnancy, you may not always actually identify the ectopic pregnancy. You often will only see secondary signs of a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Let's look at this image. Here, you're looking at the short axis of a uterus using an endocavitary probe. Surrounding your uterus, you should notice the anechoic structure that is free fluid surrounding your uterus. In the right clinical setting of a pregnant patient with lower abdominal pain or vaginal bleeding, with an unidentifiable definitive IUP and free fluid like this on their pelvic study, I would be very concerned for a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. What if I told you that that same patient had a beta quant number of 1500? A beta quantification number is a lab value that is routinely used to monitor the progression in an early pregnant female. A value of 1500 is a relatively low number. One might be tempted to think that because the number is relatively low, they probably just have a very early intrauterine pregnancy that is not identifiable on ultrasound as yet. That would be an incorrect correlation. The literature shows that there is no reliable correlation between a beta quant number and your gestational age or your expected ultrasound findings. So don't use your beta quant number when ruling out an ectopic pregnancy. Here we're looking at the short axis of your uterus using an endocavitary probe. If I told you that this patient had a positive pregnancy test, I would be concerned because within the uterus, I don't see any identifiable intrauterine pregnancy. However, if you look out to the right side, outside the uterus, you do see what looks like a gestational sac with fetal material and even cardiac activity present. This was an ectopic pregnancy in the right fallopian tube. How about this image? Once again, we're looking at a short axis view of your uterus, and we've moved our probe to look at the left side of the pelvic cavity. Here, we should expect to find a left ovary. We don't see any identifiable gestational sac or a definitive IUP within the uterus. However, within the left ovary, we notice a gestational sac with hyperechoic material within it. This was an ectopic pregnancy found within the left ovary. How about this image? Once again, we're looking at a short axis view for your uterus. And surrounding your uterus, you notice anechoic material with some hyperechoic material within it. This is actually free fluid around your uterus with hyperechoic clots. This is a very concerning finding for a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Here's your ultrasound pearl. If you have a patient where you have a very high suspicion for a ruptured ectopic pregnancy, but on your ultrasound exam cannot actually identify the ectopic pregnancy, move your low frequency probe up to the right upper quadrant as if performing a fast view. If you see free fluid around the liver like this, that would be consistent with the ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Remember, a ruptured ectopic pregnancy is going to bleed into your peritoneal space, so you may find a positive fast exam. So to summarize, let's review an algorithm on how to assess the early pregnant female who presents with abdominal pain and or vaginal bleeding in order to rule out an ectopic pregnancy. If you have a patient with a positive pregnancy test, you should perform a bedside ultrasound study. Either you will see a definitive IUP, in which case you've ruled out your ectopic and you're done, or you will not see a definitive IUP. If you don't see a definitive IUP, you should be considering one of the following options. Either you've visualized your ectopic pregnancy and will not consult your OBGYN consultant for further management, or you have secondary findings that are concerning for a ruptured ectopic pregnancy, such as free fluid in the pelvis or a positive fast exam. Again, you would consult your OBGYN consultant for further definitive management. Your third option would be very early gestational age. If this is the case, your patient would require close follow-up and monitoring and a repeat ultrasound within one week to identify their definitive IUP. So I hope you liked this video. It was taken from our CME accredited Point of Care Ultrasound Essentials course. Absolutely make sure to check it out and to register for a free trial, which will give you access to selected lessons in the course. If you want to learn how MedMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MedMastery video. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you again soon.